I'm Angelica. I was a CIR on the JET program from 2018 to 2020. Um, I've recently been asked some questions about life as a CIR from someone who is in the process of applying just a few months ago. They mentioned that there wasn't a lot of information about CIR positions online specifically and I also remember that being kind of the case for me when I was applying. I thought that this is the perfect timing. I think people should be starting to get their either acceptance notifications about now or maybe their placement notifications. Even though it's been almost three years since I've left the JET program, um, but I'll be sharing my experiences from what I know. I also don't think a lot has changed within the three years. I mean, it's not, you know, we had COVID, like the general gist of things I think wouldn't have changed too much. Also a side note, if you don't know what the JET program or the CIR position is, Google it. <laughs> but in a nutshell, the JET program is basically a program that allows people to live and work in Japan. Um, a majority of the program is for ALTs or assistant language teachers. So mainly native English speakers and there is no requirement to be Japanese language proficient. There's a tractor coming by. I should I show you guys? I live in the countryside so... So there's a lot of kind of farming activities going on around this season because it is spring which is very exciting so you can be an ALT that's like the majority of people on the program there is a smaller group of participants they're called the CIRs or the coordinator for international relations and this position hires from a wider variety of different countries and you don't have to necessarily speak English including like the top major e English speaking countries like the US or the UK I've also met people from France, Germany, um, Taiwan, China, Korea, Vietnam and I can't think of any more but I'm pretty sure there are more but yeah, this position has a way more diverse job description, which I'll get into a little bit more later. But the main requirement or qualifying factor is that you have to have a high level of Japanese language skills. So maybe that's why it's not talked about as much because it's, um, I think, objectively more like easier to get into an ALT position compared to the CIR position. Let's dive into the questions. Um, I think I'm going to split these off into like CIR specific questions and then if you stick around to the end or just kind of jump forward, I have a few, like two on just general JET program um, related questions. First one, where were you sent in Japan and what were some of the main responsibilities of that job? The CIR position can greatly vary depending on the area you get placed in so sometimes it's difficult to actually know what you will do if you get hired. But to answer the first part of the question, I got placed in Aomori Prefecture all the way up north to a city called Hachinohe. Um, my contract was directly with the department within the city hall called the Citizens Collaborations Promotion Section or something. My main responsibilities included attending like monthly meetings with the International Relations Volunteer Association and helping them plan events. Um, or we had like monthly lesson plans for visiting local after school daycares. And then basically creating like fun little games for kids to learn about like my culture in a very non-formal setting. And then we also had like quarterly English lessons for homeschoolers and adults. And lastly, um, translating and interpreting or editing like city, city documents. So for tourism and like festival pamphlets and website information and sister city communications and like the occasional like foreign visitor that somehow landed in Hachinohe. And uh, I would say these jobs kind of came the least frequent out of the others. So as you can tell, it's quite a mixed bag. Um, there was a lot of random things that I got to do too, 
including like a business trip to a sister city and planning a photography exhibit there for like our 20th 25th anniversary program and also like riding on Japanese fishing boats with like this marine American marine educator who would visit from the US and go around to like various Japanese schools in the local area and we would do these programs and then go on a boat and like yeah it's just like a educational event and I had to help translate and interpret and plan the kind of events for that person there was a lot of downtime where I sat around and uploaded photos to the work Instagram as well yeah I had to like find something for myself to do because sometimes there's just not a whole lot going on so and I think like the latter half was also affected by COVID so maybe that's a little a bit of a different case but all in all I rarely had to work overtime my coworkers they're really lax and easygoing and it was a great time and so I had just been placed in that kind of situation you know um it's a perfect size city in the sense that we have had some semblance of like sister city relations and like we have a few universities who are pretty i guess proactive in getting international students but it's still small enough of a city where there's like not a whole lot going on in the down seasons so on the flip side of that I just want to touch a little bit on just how different the CIR position can be really depending on the contracting organization that you get placed in. I had friends, CIR friends who are further up north in Aomori Prefecture. Like their job was essentially being an ALT. Like their position title was CIR but they were going around to schools and teaching English as an ALT would do. And then on the other side of the spectrum, there are people I know in like Hiroshima or Shizuoka and like Kobe that are like obviously bigger, more well-known cities and so they were interpreting for like governors at international conferences or working with um, like universities in the area for their international students or I knew a few people who were like placed in the tourism department of their city and so that was really cool because they got like a budget um, they were required to like kind of think of like a plan or something and sort of pitch their ideas that was like I, I heard about that and I was like yeah these people definitely have more hard skills and experience coming out of the JET program like they're probably learning a lot and like really really challenging being challenged um, and but I think they also probably have to do a lot of overtime work which is what comes with you know being having a busier schedule um, a lot of work events on the weekends and yeah that's just how much of a difference there is in the CIR positions second question did you enjoy working as a CIR what was it like did you work alongside other CIRs or were you the only one in the office First of all, I loved working as a CIR. There are some people who have like co-CIRs, like two or three other people in that same position. I especially probably in the prefectural roles, like in Aomori City for the prefecture roles. There was like one US CIR, one UK person, one Chinese, one Korean, like representatives, I guess, from different countries, which was pretty cool. But yeah, I just worked by myself and I got to enjoy other aspects of living in the Japanese countryside outside of work. How high of Japanese skill was required in your experience to be a CIR? So for example, uh, good conversational and comprehension or like more formal Japanese. But because of the job description I just gave you guys, you can probably tell that my workplace was really lax, really, really, really chill about using Kegel. Um, most of the time, I was talking with like my immediate coworkers, or like the volunteers that we worked with, or like other students who were. I mean, I guess we had like adult programs too, but they understood and knew and expected me to be the foreigner. So I think it would have been actually kind of weird. In retrospect if I just like went full out like keigo super formal Japanese on them so 
yeah we kept it really casual for the most part i imagine if your placement has a bigger like foreign international presence or more like business and tourist tourism responsibilities you probably need kegel a lot more so like all in all it definitely probably wouldn't hurt to brush up on those skills if not for future scenarios like job searching after the jet program um, but definitely for me like conversational level comprehension maybe a little above average comprehension and speaking level was like pretty the sweet spot for my job after you were notified that you were accepted and hired to be CIR was there any specific training or things Jet, Re or Jet recommended you to do to prepare? Was there training once you arrived in Japan or did they send you straight to your area and learn day by day? Your consulate should be really communicative on the entire process and the expectations after you get accepted and you'll also get um, an email. I think I got like actual mail from my contracting organization before I left for Japan and your predecessor should also contact you to give you like a big rundown on like what to expect when you get here what your like main job responsibilities are pretty much hold your hand throughout the entire process yeah we didn't have like any training other than like one info session at the local consulate that was like also I think a few weeks or like a few days before departure they do their best and you really don't have to stress out too much about like being prepared for the job i personally think anyways um we also had like one info session at the jet orientation in tokyo so after at least this was pre-covid so after we arrived in tokyo we had like three days i think and they separated the alts from the crr so we got like our own specific sort of training kind of like what to expect business mannerisms and whatnot but i mean it was honestly such a blur like you know the whole moving thing meeting new people i don't remember anything yeah so i just i wouldn't sweat it honestly <laughs> other than that you're just sent straight to your placement from tokyo um but your contracting organization they should help you with like moving they should pick you up from the airport or wherever you're getting picked up and you start working the next day it's pretty crazy yeah like i remember the first i think it was the first official day of work my coworkers kind of just drove me around to like daiso nitori which is like kind of like the home goods store and we just bought like random things that i needed for my apartment we got like a little mattress like the stone thing stone stone that you just put on the ground on top of the tatami mats and they dropped me off at the apartment they're like okay like have at it you know see you tomorrow so yeah i just got time to like figure everything out settle in and i remember being like what the heck <laughs> what did it where am i try to take it easy spend as much time as you can with your family and friends before you leave for who knows how long <laughs> last cir question if you were to go back and give yourself advice on something you would have done differently whether in preparation period or actually on the job what would it be i really enjoyed my time on the jet program i got to travel hang out with friends all on a comfortable salary and a lot of paid leave so i mean it was very ideal for someone coming out of university and applying for the next year so i had like a year in between where i had like a i guess like a proper nine to five job but i was still very much in that like student kind of play fun mode one thing i wish that i did was preparing myself for life after the jet program so up until that point like my only goal was to come and work and live in japan like all i wanted to do was try to live here and see what it was like i didn't really think much about what i wanted to do after because like in reality the maximum amount of time that you have on the jet program is five years and most people only do like one or two i kind of wish i had a little bit more foresight to build up more skills during that time basically my predecessor got an online degree during his jet years and he said that helped a lot with like job searching afterwards 
because I think the JET program gives you a lot of like these soft skills. You learn like how to talk with people who are culturally and linguistically different. I think most people find themselves lacking in hard skills after leaving JET. You should take JET as like a really fun time, but also a time to think more about like what you want to do after JET program because it's gonna creep up on you sooner or later. And so my main advice is to, com to continue to pursue whatever you're curious about while you're on the JET program, whether it's like job related or not, just because you don't know where it'll lead you and any experience that you gain will help you work towards your next step in some way or another. Next, I am not a career counselor. I can't take responsibility. On to more general JET related questions. Do you know if JET actually considers your preference of location? Was your placement where you initially wanted to go? So from what I've heard, and I'm pretty sure this is all over the internet as well, your preferences pretty much don't, they don't matter. My CO just happened to need someone who could speak Chinese and English, and their sister city in the US just happened to be near where I used to live for during college, my college years and after. So yeah, my personal opinion is that it's heavily based on what your contracting organization requests. So I've heard people who their CEOs request someone who speaks like a certain English accent. So for example, like the past five ALTs we've had, they are from Australia. So we would really like it if we could get someone who speaks in an Australian accent so that our kids don't get confused with like why, why, why is this person speaking English differently? So in my case, I put down Tokyo, Kansai, and Tohoku, which is such a big area. Yeah, and I ended up getting placed in Tohoku region. So I guess my placement request did come true. But yeah, I mean, you, you will most likely get placed in the countryside if you're on the JET program. And I think it's a really valuable and unique experience that not a lot of people get to have because it's so much easier to move to Tokyo after the JET program. Okay, last question. Was it hard to transition from a JET CIR to another career? Was it tough to find work post JET in Japan? And I'm kind of going through the whole career job finding process myself as well. It's what I think about every day. <laughs> so I can't give too much advice, I think, on that. But in my experience, just looking at like even job boards and going to job fairs and stuff like that, I think CIRs have a, a bit of an easier time transitioning into another job post jet program just because it sounds so much nicer on the resume, you know, like you've worked in a Japanese office and you the job responsibility required you to actually know Japanese and you know like if you're proactive like maybe you got the JLPT N2 or maybe even N1 like I don't know like if you have these skills and like maybe some cert certifications to back that up it's a lot it's a lot it's it looks nice um, especially like being familiar and comfortable in a Japanese workplace I think opens up the doors for not just like foreign based companies or like foreigner friendly companies but also like if you wanted to work at a full-on Japanese company I think that's like a super big big asset and so I know some CIR friends who went to work for international study abroad offices in Japanese universities or like a regular Japanese office job in like HR. One friend who, she was really proactive though, but she was an ALT and then she um, got a lot of interviews. I think she even got offers from a few companies, like Japanese companies who wanted her to like relocate to like Shikoku or somewhere somewhere down south. I don't think she took that offer because unfortunately Salary is not so high in Japan. So that's also something to take into consideration Obviously Probably the opportunities are not gonna be as diverse. I think finding any random job in Japan 
shouldn't be too hard it just depends on like what your expectations are what you kind of what kind of job you want and what kind of environment you want to be working in to give you a little bit of information about what my job was after the jet program so i wanted to stay in the same city that i was working in also because it was during covid at that time so i didn't wasn't too keen on moving to a bigger city at that point so and i was really interested in design i wanted to i had no no design background and um just so happened that one of the local companies in the same city was looking for like another kind of designer um and the person there was like yeah i'll teach you from from start to finish pretty much and so i got hired there it was like a landscaping company so i did a bit of like cad cad related design work like i would draft things on the computer and then we would do sort of project construction management and stuff like that <laughs> just like it sounds crazy because like, i had no certifications at this point i'm like a complete foreigner to like meet with clients and like talk to them about like what they want and like gardens and stuff and like it was it was really fun um i learned a lot it was fun in that sense like i learned so much about something that i had never even thought about before so yeah it was a random transition but i think if you ask around to people that you know even if it's a smaller city like the one that i'm in i hope to help you think a little bit about like if you want to apply for the jet program or you are already accepted into the cir position in which case congratulations you're gonna have a lot a lot of fun and your experience will definitely be whatever you make out of it so just in enjoy the moment because there are so many times that i'm just like damn that was that was such a good and fun point in my life i obviously have not been uploading a lot of videos by the way to the channel as you can probably tell but i have <laughs> i still have all the travel footage from three four years ago now at this point when my sister came to visit me pre-covid um, which i think i want to just finish editing i just need to get it out of my hair after i get all that done i think i'm gonna do more sort of countryside content just to show you guys what life is like here if you're interested please stay let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see or hear me talk about thank you and have a wonderful wonderful day when my chick was like Bye. topo say won't you kick it with some logos babe not a winning on this side